last night and I woke up uh, a few hours later on well, a very long trip. The trip is almost 20 hours end to end. Uh, and I woke up early, so I can get my suit on and my tie on and make sure I look very professional and presentable. And then I meet Steve. And then the first thing that Steve uh, tells me is we want this event to be a hip event, high energy event, non-traditional. Why are you wearing a suit and a tie? <laughs> So with that said, I would like to uh, change that. I also would like to help wake you up in the audience a bit. So if we can uh, cue up the music, please. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking to you about uh, big data at my company, Cloudera. We were founded uh, six years ago, and that was before big data even had the name big data. We played a very big role in the formation of this market, and uh, our marketing team is to blame a lot with coming up with the name big data and pushing it across many, many industries. So I'll be telling you about Cloudera very briefly. I just have one slide about Cloudera, but the rest of this talk, and one of the reasons why I wanted you to wake up, is a bit technical behind the reasons why big data is happening now and what types of problems are we solving with this technology. So with that said, I will provide my clicker with the jacket. <laughs> we'll go to the first slide. So yeah, Cloudera. We were uh, started in 2008. There was four of us, four founders in the company. Uh, myself, I come from Yahoo. So I worked at Yahoo before Cloudera for eight years. Uh, did uh, business intelligence and data analytics over there. My co-founders come from Facebook, Google, and Oracle. And there was four of us back then. Today, there's more than 700 of us in Cloudera worldwide. And there's about five of us here in uh, Singapore today. We have lots and lots of customers who use our open source distribution. You can see this mission critical uh, line in the middle of the slide there. And we have uh, uh, more than 500 actually today paid large Fortune 1000 companies deploying our products. I'll give you some examples of that as we move ahead. Very rich partner ecosystem. We trained more than 100,000 people across the world. Some of that training is in person, but a lot of it is online about how to use this technology for the purpose of big data. Let me, uh, yeah. Last but not least, we heard about uh, the total capital raised, the funding we had at Cloudera. Uh, we are very fortunate we set a record for the most capital raised by an enterprise software company. Uh, we raised more than $1 billion, that's billion with a B, in funding at Cloudera. And the reason why I say that is not to brag about it, it's partially to brag about it, but the real reason why I say that is to reinforce two things. First, this big data movement is real. You don't get this level of investment and funding on fake ideas. This is changing the world right now as we speak. That's number one. And uh, number two, Cloudera itself now, because of being well-funded, we're going to be here for many, many years to come. So this is a very long-term business. This is not a short-term uh, buzz thing. Uh, the mic is kind of annoying. <laughs> Move it higher and see if it works. Hopefully, this works. Hopefully, this works better with feet. Last but not least, our mission at Cloudera, what we try to do is help organizations leverage the power of all of their data to ask bigger questions. Two key parts of that all of their data, so not just structured data that includes everything and ask bigger questions, meaning go beyond what SQL as a language, SQL, structured query language, go beyond what that language can do for you. Because the problems of the next generation that we will try to solve will require that. That's it. That's all I have from uh, Cloudera. I, I should briefly mention, as part of uh, this slide as well, one of our very key investors at Cloudera, you can see a bunch of them on the slide there, the names for them. But one very key one is Intel. So Intel Capital, 
of the 1 billion in Intel Capital is almost 75% uh, of that came from Intel Capital, and they own about 18% in Cloudera. Uh, I'll explain in a second why. Why would Intel make an investment like that? Hopefully it's obvious to you. For those of you familiar with Hadoop, it should be very obvious. So before I proceed on the next slide, I wanted to get a show of hands, and please help me out here. How many of you heard about Hadoop before? Just heard the word Hadoop before, you can raise your hands. So I'm say, seeing about maybe 70% of the hands in the room go up, which is great. If you're in the right room, and that will help me a lot in giving this talk. That said, for the benefit of the remaining 30%, I will slow down just a little bit, so please humor me there. So the next question we get asked is, why is this happening now? Why this big data movement? Why do we care about it? And Steve said in his talk, a big part of it is just, we humans, we keep making more babies and we keep living longer. That is definitely a very big part of it. But the two key reasons why this is happening now is number one, we are much more sophisticated as businesses and governments and organizations at collecting data about our business because of the IT movement. Because of the information technology movement, a lot of our business stuff is happening inside of computers already. And it's very easy to instrument and collect data from computers. Right? So that's number one. Also, computers don't sleep. They keep making data all the time. The other key reason why this is happening now, which I'm sure many of you have heard about, is the Internet of Things. Right? It's not only are we now good at measuring what's happening in the online world, inside the computer, we're also now collecting data much more intelligently about what's happening in the real physical world. Because of mobile devices, sensor networks, RFID packs, GPS equipment, satellites, videos, cameras, you name it, we are collecting way more data from the physical world. And it's, that, it's the collision of these two trends that is what is leading to this big data movement. Six years ago, when we were uh, starting Cloudera, we went to our initial investors, and we did a pitch to a lot of the investors. As you know, investors tend to turn you down more than they agree to give you money. And uh, back then, a lot of our early uh, investors turned us down. They turned us down and said, no, Cloudera, we're not going to give you funding, because we only think the technology you're working on is relevant for web companies, for companies like Facebook and Google and Yahoo. We don't think this is going to be applicable for all companies. These investors now all regret their decision for not investing in Cloudera. We proved them wrong. This technology is applicable across every single industry you can think of. Even we, the founders at Cloudera, have been surprised by some of the new industries we are in. Now, I will give a use case example at the end from agriculture industry. I never thought I would have an agriculture customer in front of this company. And you will see why we, we have that. So don't try to read the slide right now, but these are some of the key use cases across these different industries. You will be getting a copy of the slide, so you'll, uh, you'll be able to read that at the leisure uh, later on. So at Cloudera, I have to be honest with you and tell you that one of the ways that we come up with all the innovations and technology improvements that we do is frankly read messages that Google sends us from the future. Google is at the future of where we all are going to be when it comes to data. Right? Because Google is solving the biggest data problem of them all, which is how can we index the entire web with all the, the volume that it has and all the different types of data that it has. Right? So they are facing the big data more than anybody else. I should mention briefly, Google also is one of the key investors at uh, Caldera. So Google, 10 years ago, they published two key papers. These papers were called the Google MapReduce paper and the Google File System paper. And in these papers, they had two messages that they sent to us from the future. One message is a business message, and the other message is a technology message. This is the business message. The business message that Google sent is the legacy way of how most of us run our business. Or every time we have an application about our customer or products or users or vendors, we make a separate copy of the data for that application. As an example, if we are a financial institution, we will have one copy of the data for the credit card, another copy of the data for checking accounts, another one for mortgage accounts, another one for trading, online trading accounts. Even though it's the same customer in all of these systems, 
And that prevents us from getting a 360 view of our customers and how they are engaging with us. Instead, what Google advocated for, to be agile, to be able to do a lot of innovation and experimentation, the only way to do this effectively is that right side of the slide. We need to have one big pool of data. And instead of copying the data to go where the application is, instead we move the application where the data is. This is the most important point that I would like to leave you with from this presentation, this point. Big data is about this more than anything else. So to help that point stick, I typically ask my audience, and I'm seeing that happening right now, by the way, seeing lots of cameras up, why do we take way more pictures over the last five years? We shifted almost 80% of our photo taking behavior to be with this device, as opposed to with a camera. Right? The reason why we shifted our photo taking behavior to be with this device, first people tell me it's because it's small. I have it in my pocket, I have it with me all the time. But we actually had cameras, we had cameras that were small and they could have been with us all the time. These cameras all die now, by the way. We, we usually don't buy these cameras anymore now. The true power, the true power of the smartphone, if you think about it, is the fact that the smartphone allows you to capture that data once. Once you capture that picture, that picture that you have in there is immediately available to all of your workloads, to all of your applications. That picture is available to Facebook, to Twitter, to your email, to your calendar, uh, to Snapchat, if you use Snapchat, etc., etc., etc. Right? Immediately available. I don't have to take the picture, go back to my desk, take out the flashcard, go stick the flashcard in a laptop before I can run my application on top of that data. And that's exactly what we are trying to do for the enterprise. We want to build, build, uh, we, I joke and say, we want to bring the power of the smartphone to the enterprise. We want to build the smartphone of big data. It's not going to be small as a smartphone, by the way. It's going to be a cluster of a lot of servers. However, the key point there is going to achieve the same capability of how can I capture my data once and then have my applications run on top of that data right away without having to move my data around. That's it. That's the power of what we do. If you look at the legacy way of how we do this in our enterprises today, this is the legacy way. The legacy way is as if somebody came to you today in the consumer world and said, I'm going to give you a video camera, I'm going to stick on it a MP3 player, and then a GPS device, and then a cell phone, and put duct tape around them, and say, here you go, smartphone. That's what we're doing today in the enterprise. We're building a separate system to store data that we want to search. From the system that's storing the data that we want to archive from the system that is storing data that we want to run analytics on, separate from another copy that we want to use for, for uh, doing transactions, etc., etc., etc. And if you keep doing that, then you keep having the problems that I'm going to go over right now. But before I go into the problems, the other key message that Google sent to us is a technology message. So again, remember, the business message is about bring the applications to the data. This is the technology message. The technology message is the legacy way of how we build our systems won't scale into the future. The legacy way is the left side of the slide. The legacy way is I have a big storage area network on one side where I keep all of my data. And then I have a big computer network on the other side where I run my applications. And the network sits in between. Every time I want to store more data, I go buy more storage over here. Every time I want to do more computation, I go buy more servers over there. That does not scale. That's called scale up architectures. And scale up architectures don't scale. Because the network in the middle will become a bottleneck eventually, depending on the, the amount of data you're trying to solve for, obviously. And that's what Google foreseen when they were building out uh, this technology a few years ago. The, what they advocated is we need to move to a model which is called scale out instead. Scale out as opposed to scale up, which is the right side of the slide. And scale out is, can I go and get a lot of small servers? Each one of these servers will have in them a couple of CPUs from Intel, which is one of our key sponsors. <laughs> we'll have in them uh, a couple of disks and, and some memory. And then every time I store my data, I divide the data across all of these systems. And every time I submit a job or a query, I break down the query across all of these systems. That's the only way to scale for big data 
in the future and still achieve high performance in terms of how quickly we process that data. So this is as far as I'm going to describe from a technology perspective here because we don't have enough time for me to dive deeper into technology. I'm going to talk more about what it enables you to do. However, if you are interested in learning more about how the technology works, I highly recommend you go to YouTube. And on YouTube, search for the keyword Hadoop. You can see it up here in the upper left, H-A-D-O-O-P. And the first result you should see in YouTube should be my face. <laughs> And that is from a lecture I gave at Stanford University a few years ago, describing in detail how this technology is scalable, how it's full tolerance, how is it reliable, and how is it agile and enables you to work with any type of data and answer any questions. So I highly recommend you go watch that talk later on. Okay. 